Welcome back. Ooh, that's a lot of reverb. Welcome back, everybody. How's everybody doing today? It's Tuesday Muse. Hey, thanks, Tom, for the super chat. That's awesome, you guys. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Tuesday Muse Day. Everything around me, <laughs> can you guys hear that? Woo! Everything around me is resonating right now, and that's okay. That's the way it is. Um, yeah, welcome. I'm. If I look distracted, it's because I am. I'm, I'm trying to manage a lot of things. It looks like we have sound, which is awesome. Uh, let me say hello. So welcome, Roseanne, of course, and uh, Noelia, and uh, yeah, Buona Notte. Um, Mr. Lacey is here. Welcome, Rebecca, Tom, and Bill Bradley. All right, from Iowa. Awesome. Uh, Joshua, um, let me get to your question a little bit later. If you could save that, uh, save it in your mind or repost it a little bit later. I'll try to remember. Um, but uh, we're going to get to Q&A. We're not quite there yet. So hold on to that thought. Um, and who else is here? And Sue, if I didn't say hello already. I think you just got here, Sue. Hello. All right. So today's, uh, I don't know, I was in kind of a... I don't know what you call this, a crystal gong, tank drum, flute mood. Uh, and hey, Chris, how are you? Welcome. And uh, so I just decided to um, break out some of my, you know, crystal, I got the crystal bowl here. I've got a nice tank drum. This is an aqua drum. I've done reviews on this. You can find it on the channel. Uh, I've got my gong right over here. This is a Peisty. I think it's a... I don't even know. I forgot. 28, 26 or 28 uh, inch Peisty Symphonic Gong, which, see, you can, <laughs> did you guys notice that? I don't know what you guys can hear, but as I'm talking, this, this gong is picking up like all kinds of frequencies. So it's just constantly ringing, uh, resonating with my voice, which is okay. Um, and maybe we'll get into talking about resonance later because uh, it has implications. Um, I also played a couple other instruments in the intro. I had uh, my little rain stick, which I love. I love this one. It's a, um, I think it's a yucca plant, yucca branch. And uh, it's just got a really nice sound. I love this thing. And then the Koshi chimes, which were here. And then I had a couple flutes. I had a bass. A from Blue Star. Thing is so long. Look at this. Dun 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 dun. dun. Oh, it's the wrong music, but you, you guys know what I'm talking about. Dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> okay. Also, this episode looks like it could have been from Star Trek. Remember that one? The Planet Eater. Ah. Okay. Uh. And then I had a, uh, my, uh oh, it's okay. Uh, and I had this flute, which is, which is, uh, one of my favorite flutes, uh, by Brent Haynes, Wood Sounds Flutes, and also an A. And, yeah, it's a good thing I have, a kind of like, a, some rubber on the floor. Hold on. This one, I missed the post. Uh, I also put a nice dent in it sometime. Oh, yeah, right here. A little dent in that one. So, you know, they get dented up. All right. So, oh, and Shelly's here. My friend Shelly from the Zuni Pueblo. Hey, Shelly. You missed the fluting, but we're going to do more later. Shelly is a, amazing. Um, you guys, are want, I want you to look up Shelly Morning Song and Fabian Fontenelle, her husband. They're an amazing couple, music couple. And uh, I just taught with them at the Solstice Flute School. Um, in Arizona, which you guys could go to next year if you want, in Prescott. And uh, Shelly has, Shelly's super multi-talented. I'm not going to talk a lot about her right now, but, um, but I will say that you guys got to look her up and check out her music. And she's also a seamstress, and she's making like amazing clothing and jewelry. And uh, Fabian is a drummer, singer, dancer. You guys, check it out, okay? We're friends on Facebook. You can Facebook friend me and then find them. Or just go to... Uh, Shelly, why don't you put your website in the chat, all right? 
because I want everybody to know who you are and what you're doing, because you inspire me. You and Fabian both inspire me. Um, okay, now, what else do we have going? I, I did want to touch on a topic. Today's topic is called Music Not Magic. So guess what I'm going to talk about a little bit and try not to hurt anyone's feelings while I'm doing it. <laughs> but this isn't about hurting people's feelings. This is about helping people um, have a realistic idea of what we're doing with music and instruments. So um, we'll get to that a little bit later. I do want to say that this crystal bowl I have, let me see, what's the best view? Well, I can show you here and I can show you here. Um, but it's hard to see the whole thing. So let me see. Oh my goodness. This is a giant A. It's an A bowl. And um, it's, uh, it's a really nice one because it resonates a long time. I'm just going to try to set it. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> uh, and I'll show you guys what I'm, how I'm playing it. Um, I have an A and I have an E. And I got these for a project that I did uh, like a year and a half, two years ago for a company and they wanted these sounds and so I got these sounds. But these um, are really amazing. This one especially, because it rings super long, all right? It's got an amazing sustain, longer than average. This thing will go like a minute and a half, two minutes. I really don't even have to go around like this. I just, you can just hit it once and it just keeps going. It's pretty crazy, you guys. Um, so I'm just, uh, I wanted to show you that, but I have this beater. This isn't a whole lesson on, you know, how to play the crystal bowl, but I have this beater. It's a crystal beater and it's got some like rubber, you know, rubbery rubber on it. And then you just, uh, things still going. <laughs> you just go around like this. Yeah, and then if you get it at a certain point, it just, the thing actually gets louder after you stop playing it. Like, it's pretty nuts. All right, so that's that. And then the gong, uh, I don't know which camera I'm looking into. Hey, the gong uh, over here, just want to cover a, a few music things, just because I can, and I thought you guys might have questions about it. Using a really soft mallet, first of all, to play the low notes. And right now I'm just using my, my talking mic. So, I mean, let me add in a little bit of the bass mic. Listen, I'm gonna turn the other mic on. Just to get the bass. Um, so this mallet, We can get some sounds. I was using these other mics too. I'm gonna to turn them on. And then I was also using um, this lighter mallet, just kind of for, it brings out other frequencies. turn the mics down. Okay, so can't you guys see why people love those gong baths? It's just a, it's like a really all-encompassing sound. It's so complex. It's, it's like you're listening to all music at the same time, <laughs> all these frequencies. And I like that too. I like, I like doing sound healing stuff. I've done some, you know, you lay down and people play different instruments for you. Um, and you can just kind of zone out, space out. Um, but I'm going to tell you what, how that works in terms of healing and why it's not magic, but it is musical. It is sound and um, it can it can feel healing for sure. Um, but I also feel like I owe it to the community to at least express my opinion, which is based on a lot of experience. Um, and I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the experience, but I can I can tell you what I think. So that's all I'm going to do. And then you guys can type what you think in the chats and we can get some different perspectives. Uh, because like my voice resonating with these instruments right now, 
all of our voices resonate with each other, right? It's like we're all prisms and a little bit of light comes in from you and then a little bit of light comes in from them and it comes into my prismness and it goes back out. And so that's how, that's how uh, everything works. And it's kind of like music, you know, the resonance frequencies affecting other things and things resonating together. Um, but I do want to say, I feel like the magic in music is not magic, it's a magical feeling. And because music is an aesthetic, right, you guys? Music is an aesthetic art, meaning it has a texture, it has a feeling, it has a story, it ha it's like a place. And just like architecture is an aesthetic or painting, drawing is an aesthetic, music is like that. And that's what really gives it the power and I think the magical feeling. Um, what is not, what, what are we not sure about? <laughs> We're not sure about a lot of the, what we, what we could call pseudoscience that, uh, that is, you know, there's a lot of it out there, you guys, there's a lot, and I'm not targeting any individuals or groups or anything right now. I'm just giving you my opinion. And that is that we just don't know about a lot of that. Like people say this and people say that, and they talk about chakras and they talk about frequencies of the earth and all this stuff, all this, it's all color coded and, you know, it's amazing. I mean, I'm actually in awe of like the body of work that's out there along those lines. Um, the issue is, uh, we don't know. We don't know. It's not really, you know, a lot of that stuff, we don't know. Jury's out, all right? But I, and the reason I say that is not to, it's not to bring anybody down or criticize anybody individually if they're, if that's their thing, like if that's what they want to do. But I just, um, I want to help everybody not get too caught up in the story or the magic, the magical, you know, story of stuff because I don't, I just think it's not necessary. And I think people can get, you know, maybe tricked or fooled or, or just um, spend money they don't need to spend or, you know, get caught up in a whole thing that's just not really direct. Um, it's kind of indirect. Does that even make sense? I, I understand there's a whole economy around that stuff. You know, it's like the whole wellness industry, um, which again, it's, I would put that in that category. It's like the wellness industry. And yeah, some, it's great to take care of yourself, but you can, you can waste a lot of money <laughs> and time and energy, you guys. And I just don't, I don't want you to do that because you are okay the way you are and everything is here for you. Everything you need is here and it's almost all free. You know, like music making and, you know, you could just get an instrument and you could play it and you can make yourself and others feel the magic through the music. You don't need like it's there's no special magical thing that's going to come in and affect you. You know, really? I mean, maybe there is, but we don't know. We don't know. But what we do know is that when we play music and we create, you know, musical textures, uh, whether it's earthy and kind of random and what we call like uh, soundscapey, you know, soundscape, um, or it's formal music like pop music or whatever, EDM. I mean, everything, everything, every style of music has the pow potential to resonate with people and change them and give them like relief and give them uh, power and energy and courage and evoke feelings of love and tenderness and sadness, which sometimes we need, and also triumph, and it can make you feel his heroic. And all of that has nothing to do with the frequencies or you know chakras or anything. It has nothing to do with that. So I'm not, I'm not saying like not to do the sound healing stuff. I'm just saying, I, in my opinion, it's not necessary, all right? That's all, that's all I'm saying. Music is magical, not the instruments. All right, I'm gonna stop talking about that because you know I don't wanna come across as negative. One of my colleagues one time said, well, if you say that, you know, people are gonna think you're negative. I don't know. Maybe they'll just think I'm being honest <laughs> and I have opinions based on my experience. I don't know. You could take it any way you want. Anyway. Let, tell us what's going on in the chat, you guys. Um, hey, Bill. Welcome. And David. Yeah, uh, Bill said even a, cat, a cat's purr is supposed to be healing. I mean, 
what is healing? Healing is, is a return to your natural state. That's what, that's one of the definitions of healing, actually, a return to one's natural state. What is your natural state? Well, look at children. I mean, they're pretty fresh, right? They're pretty new. <laughs> they're pro probably good indicators of what our natural state is. Now, in general, not every single child, but you know, because some children have special circumstances that maybe are where they're not representing their natural state or a state that they would aspire to be in or that their parents would want them to be in, ideally. But in general, what do children do? They play, they sing, they dance, they come up with ideas, they're full of creativity, they're uninhibited. You know, I mean, I, one of the things I love to do when I travel is I'm just in an airport, right? And rather than just scrolling on the phone or whatever, I'll just watch people and I love seeing the kids, like the four-year-olds, you know, three and four-year-olds. They're my favorite people to watch uh, because there's, they, they make a song about everything. They make a game about anything. They don't need a lot of stuff to do it. And they're professional at playing. You know, they're professional creatives. It's so inspiring, you guys. And then I look at that and I say, yeah, that's how we are. That's how we're supposed to be. And what happens, you know, and I don't want to get on another soapbox. What happens is it gets, it just gets crushed out of us. <laughs> you know, it gets, it gets so suppressed on our creativity, like that spirit of the three, four, five-year-olds. Sadly, it gets uh, socialized out of us. It gets shamed out of us. It gets, you know, I mean, some people call it, uh, enculturation, but, or whatever, but, um, you know, we have to fight as individuals to keep that stuff, to keep the childlike wonderment. And, um, that's another gift of music. And it's a magical quality of music is that it allows us an opportunity. It doesn't guarantee it. It's just an opportunity to tap in to that childlike play and wonderment and the world. You can create your own world. Uh, in music, and that's what I, one thing I love about it. Um, so, <laughs> not my cat, my cat is from hell. He is evil. Yeah, well, that's another thing about cats, you know, that they could be. Uh, that's funny. All right, you guys, so yeah, and you know, the other thing is, just to, just to uh, dovetail on that comment, that's the other thing about sound and healing and and uh anything in that category is that the same thing that might work or the the experience that one person might have with something you know with some modality of anything is not going to necessarily work for somebody else because it's personal and it's cultural and you know it's regional it's cultural it has to do with you and your family and where you're from and that, you know, now we could talk about appropriation. <laughs> uh, yeah, nothing quite, there's nothing quite like, like an American, like an, like a real American talking about chakras and, uh, becoming a gong master. All right. Now I sound mean, <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, it's like, it's, you can't just pluck things out of other cultures and then apply them as if they're valid. You know, that's all. That's what I meant to say. Um, but you can take instruments and you can do your own thing with them that you need for yourself. All right. So why don't we do some of that? I think I want to play the gong a little bit more because that's pretty fun. And I want to do it by itself so you guys can hear it. And hopefully you can hear it well. I don't know. I'll check this later and see how the sound is coming through. But um, I kind of want to make some more music right now. So I'm going to go back to the gong. And then um, if you guys could put together, have your questions ready about anything here, and then we'll do some Q&A after this. All right. And we'll, we also have to get to another feature of the show. But let's, let's play the gong a little bit.
Okay. It's still going. <clears throat> you know, um, these you can get lost in these things and just keep going and keep going. It's pretty amazing. Um, but we need to do something else right now, and that is... Guess the sound! <laughs> That's right, you guys. Uh, okay, here it is. This should be, this should be easy. I think, oh, it's so, there, everything's resonating right now. Woo! That's not the sound. All right, guess the sound. This should be really easy. What do you guys think? First person to guess the sound gets eight and a half points. <laughs> I'm dropping things over here. Uh. What is it? I have to wait because I have I have like a 20 second delay. I think I told you guys before. Um, there's kind of a delay on the chat from what I see, but let me know if you think you know what the sound is, and I want the correct name, not a uh, description. I want the name. This is like a test. So far, I'm getting descriptions. <laughs> you guys aren't entirely wrong, but uh, I'm looking for the name. I know, that's kind of like... <laughs> Let's have some rain while we're waiting. Chimes. What is the name? Aha! All right, Roseanne gets the eight and a half points. <laughs> All right, yes, Puili, Puili sticks, you guys. Ooh, that was magical. Um, Puili sticks. So these are these are from last week's show. I know. See, Shelly, you weren't here, so you missed it. Uh, these are Puili sticks. These are Hawaiian instrument. And actually, we don't call them Puili sticks. It's because it's redundant, kind of. I mean, the name is Puili, right? That's what it's called. You know, it's if you call them Puili sticks, it's kind of like, it's kind of like I don't know, calling a, a guitar like a guitar strummer. Or guitar string thing. I mean, you know. Anyway, uh, Puili, bamboo, uh, serrated. So some of you, you guys were right on the uh, on the descriptions. Just wanted to get the name Puili, Puili. Okay. And last week I talked about how it's not plural. Like the I had a. You know, I had these these bundle sticks that they had mass produced, one of the drum companies, and they called them Puilis. No, <laughs> just Puili. That that's that's enough. All right. What else do we have now? Let's do Q and A. Um, we're at about five thirty-seven. I see. So, um, yes, Roseanne, you're up to. Oh, you're keeping track. Fifteen and a half points. All right. Well. That's good. You only need like 800 points to redeem them. <laughs> to redeem yourself. All right, uh, Q&A. Let's do some Q&A and then we'll get ready for the Gimme Five. And I'm afraid the Gimme Five is gonna have to be made up of like whatever I have right here because I am not resetting up all this stuff. It's too much. Uh, so you can pick, for the Gimme Five, you can pick from Gong, Crystal Bowl, Tank drum, Koshi chimes, flutes, I'll just put any flute, rain stick, oh, and I also, you guys, I have this drum, let me show you, 
I have this drum. I've had it a long time and I still have the tag on it. I guess it's like my Howdy Doody drum or something. Only very old people will get that reference. Not older people will get that reference. Um, but this is a cool drum. It's made from a gourd. Look at that. And this is, this is made by a woman that has a company called Mojave, Mojave Drums. And it's a nice little drum. It's, it's got this animal skin head and it's all like handmade. It's kind of got like a djembe type uh, rope thing. It's a really sweet drum. Let me just play it for you. this. Right? Okay, so this is on the, this is on the Gimme 5 uh, list. You can use that. Just call it the drum. It's kind of like a hoop drum, but it's cool, right? It's made from a calabash. I guess I could play it like a like a frame drum too. It's pretty thick, but that works. All right, so that's the drum. And then what do we have? What are these? We have those two. So yeah, I don't know if I would, I don't think I would call that a Native American drum, Rebecca. Um, I think it's a kind of a in Native American hoop drum inspired drum, um, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Maybe Shelly knows. I don't know if you know Shelly, if, if that would be like, if you've ever seen that at any events, like drums like that from your community. I don't know. Okay, so everybody check out the uh, Gimme Five outline uh, guidelines that Roseanne just posted. <laughs> and Bill writes, it's howdy doody time with Buffalo Bob. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's good, Bill. I mean, you know, you're in the know. And also, Bill plays and makes flutes, by the way. And so does Tom. Tom was here earlier. I don't know if you're still here, Tom. Uh, Tom Fox makes flutes and plays drums. What's going on with all the flutes and drums and drumming and music? And uh, Roseanne, see, Roseanne, your, your screen name is messing me up because I always called you random. <laughs> Not Roseanne. Uh, Roseanne plays drums and Native American style flutes. And uh, yeah, a lot of you do. I know that. All right. Yes. And let's do. Oh, folk thinks it's inspired from India. India? Maybe. Yeah, could be. I don't know. I could ask. I could ask the maker. I'm. I'm not sure if Mojave Drums is still in business. I think maybe. I mean, you could look it up. You know, it's easy to find. I'm trying to see if there's a. I can't read anything, you guys. I'm getting old. Because uh, you know how you have to hold something like far away to read it, and then it's too far away. <laughs> That's the. Uh, that's the, yeah, mojavedrums.com. Mojave is M-O-J-O-V-E. And she, it was in Meadview, Arizona. So, but this was a, this is a while ago. I got this because I did an event at Lake, I guess it was Lake Mead. Not Lake Mead, no. What's that other big lake where they have the, they have London Bridge now. That lake, ah, forgetting the name. Uh, it, I did an event out there and I got this from the maker and it's just a really nice drum. What is that lake? Cornelius, hello, welcome. Yes, you are. We're just doing Give Me Five. You're, you still have time if you want to get in. 
um, is up to Roseanne. And Bill, Bill Bradley says, Karen Carpenter played drums. I did not know that. That's cool. So you guys go ahead and choose something if you want. I'm going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and clear out the looper. And some of you were asking about the looper and Shelly, I'm going to do this for you because we, you were, we just talked last night about the looper and I'm going to move. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. I just moved the camera and maybe what I'll do is when I do the looping, I'll just show you guys what I'm doing over here a little bit. Some people were asking for that. Um, so let me show you while we're waiting for the Gimme 5. So I have some tracks in here that I put in the looper and I can start and stop them. And then I have volume over here. And then, so here's the, like the reins over here, right? Um, Cornelius, I think you can read I th or maybe somebody will post it, but it's like crystal ball, gong, tank drum, rain stick, flutes, drum. Oh yeah, Lake Havasu. Lake Havasu is the lake. Thank you, Rebecca. See, so I've got stuff in the looper here and then you can just treat it like a mixer. You can start and stop things. Um, but right now, I'm going to erase all that. And I hold this button down. And now it's gone. So erase this. Erase that. Um, and I can do other things. I'm going to, uh, depending on what the Gimme 5 is, I'm going to, I might reset the tempo because I usually have a click in my headphones, um, which you guys don't hear most of the time. Sometimes you do. But I usually set it up so I can hear a beat or a click, and then I'm playing stuff, um, and I can play with the click or I can not play with the click. Sometimes I, I ignore the click for the first part, and then I start adding things in the click, and then I just kind of go with it. Uh, so anyway, it's um, that's an option that's available to you if you're doing looping, live looping. All right, so we're about there. We, yeah, this is a good time to get into the Gimme 5. Also, if anybody has a question, general question, I know there was one earlier. Let me see if I can scroll up. Um, I know somebody had a general question for me. Now I cannot find it. Can I find it? Yeah, Joshua asked about Patreon. I mean, if you go, if you're a patron, then you can send me a message through the Patreon. That's a, that's a good way to do it. Because then it, there's a thread and everything. And an email, you know, sometimes it just gets buried. But uh, if, there's, if you're a patron, then we can start a little thread. Everything stays there. So that's patreon.com slash Kalani. You guys know this right here. Yeah, or yeah, kalanimusic.com, you can also message me. No problem, you guys. Um, Mr. Lacey Joyce has a question. What is the controller you use? Oh, to the top right of the looper? Uh, you're talking about this or the or this? This to the this is the looper right here. And then this would be the Right, top left, right? And this is uh, called an A10 Mini Pro ISO. This is for video. This is my video switcher. So see this button right here? If I press it, it goes to this camera. <laughs> and then if I press, so I'll go back here, and if I press this button, it goes to that camera. So um, yeah, that's the video switcher. And then this thing over here that you can't see, the corner of, this is my mixer over here. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna show you guys that because there's nothing going on over there that you need to see. <laughs> Cornelius, what is Mini K up to? Oh, that's a good idea. So when I go to the mixer, I'll be here. Oh, but see now we can't see it. <laughs> that backfired. So what do we do? Bam! Super tight. Oh, now my head's getting cut off. Where, where can I go? 
Nope. I think Mini K is getting blocked. There we go. I'm here. <laughs> this is Mini K. Okay, so Mini K is here. That's that's okay. It's blocking the looper a little, but hardly. All right, maybe I can move the camera a little bit. Here we go. Let's move this. All right. How about that? That's a little better. Anyway, I'm just going to I'll I'll try to keep this going a little bit. Um for right now, I'm going to come back here and the, the mini case is going to stay down here. Hello. All right, what do we got, Roseanne? I need a give me five lineup. Um, did you already put it? Oh, yes, you did. Shelly, all right. Puili, gong, Brent's flute, crystal bowl, Mojave drum. Awesome. Got it. I got it locked in <laughs> for like five seconds. So I'm going to move. So what I like to do, you know, you guys, is is just arrange things a little bit to make it easy on myself. So I'm just going to get rid of things we're not using. So let me do that. Because why not, right? Make it easy on yourself if you're going to do something. I'm going to put the crystal ball on top of this. Let me show you what I'm doing. I'm going to, I have this kind of foam that I use for different things. And so it, it works well for this, I think. And now we've got the A flute, we've got the Mojave drum. Uh, over here, and I think what I'll do is I'll put this over here. Hopefully my music stand stays. And Shelly, uh, let me ask you this because we can also do a dedication um, and you can also pick like a tempo and style like, you know, fast, medium, slow, or a style, uh, whatever. So if you want, that's, that's optional. So I'll give you a second to think about that, but let me know. And I will continue to get ready. So we've got gong, oh, puili. Gong, puili, flute, okay. This, 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 and. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, okay. I got everything ready. Medium tempo. All right. So to me, medium tempo is about anywhere from 90 to like 80 to 100, maybe 110. So I'll just bump it up a little. Let's go with 88. Super lucky number in China. They like number eight. I don't know. Not four. <laughs> All right. Uh, Oh, you want blues? What? <laughs> blues with a gong and a crystal ball. I'll do it. I will do it. That's funny. All right, hold on. Let me let me check my click thing. All right, I think we're good. I might, you know, I might sneak some cajon in there too. Sometimes I do that if I feel like it, if it needs it. All right, we got to get going. Uh, we don't have that much more time. So let's do it. Let's do some blues uh, looping. And thanks to Shelly for the suggestion. Let's go.
got the gong hitting blue. I got the gong blue. I got the gong hitting blue. What shall I use? The gong hitting blue. I got the gong in blue. I can feel the frequency. It's making me freaky. See, it's got the frequency of the world. It's got the frequency. It's got the gong. All right, you guys, that's all I got. <laughs> that's all I got. Thank you, Shelly, appreciate that. I did the best I could, you know. It's kind of a weird combo, but <laughs> it could, it, that could have gone in any number of different directions. I kind of feel like I played it a little bit safe, you know, just doing like a blues groove. Cause you can get crazy with the Pu'ili. Uh, <laughs> I was a little conservative on that side. Um, but yeah, thank you. I, I do, I really like the challenge of just having like random instruments, you know, thrown into a combination and it's like a style and just go and make something. So that, uh, that was, yeah, that was fun. So I'm gonna take, say bye to Mini K. Bye bye. All right. Um, thanks you guys, I will, See you guys. Um, oh, by the way, I'm going to be out of town next Tuesday. So no Tuesday Muse Day. Sorry. Uh, I've got it. my dad's birthday is actually Friday, but we're celebrating it on Monday night. And so I'm going to be out of town up in Oakland and then driving back on Tuesday. You know, should I say I'll be here back on ready to go on Tuesday at five? I don't know. I don't. Maybe. <laughs> you know what? I'll send out, if I get back and I can get ready and it's cool, I will, I'll post it. You can see, you can check if it's upcoming. Usually I, I post it um, like by 4 p.m. So that would be the latest. So if you don't see anything upcoming by four, probably not gonna happen at five, all right? Pacific time. But thanks you guys. Thanks Shelly for sticking around. Say hi to Phobe for me. Um, Roseanne, thank you for, as always, for kind of uh, moderating and, and keeping everything going. I appreciate you guys showing up. If, um, if you guys want to do more on the Native American style flute, remember, we've got, where is it? That's not it. Flute Harvest <laughs> coming up in October. That's next month. Um, go to fluteharvest.com if you want to check out more about that. And... We just did the Gimme Five, so sorry for the late title, but that's the way it goes. Thank you guys, appreciate it. Um, I will put some of this groove back on as we say goodbye, and I uh, hope you guys have a great week. And I'll see you next time. Here's more shots of the looper.
Drum Club.